It's like Springfield has a Google fever here. This is exciting. Good afternoon. On behalf of Missouri State University, I want to welcome everyone to today's news conference. Uh, before we get started, allow me to give you a quick rundown of the order of events for, for this afternoon. In a few moments, uh, Missouri State President Cliff Smart and Director of Athletics Kyle Motes uh, will come to the podium to discuss how we got to this point, the uh, interview process, the hiring process, and then Kyle will introduce you to our new head coach, who will share some prepared remarks uh, with you. And finally, when she has concluded, uh, we'll open the floor to questions from our media representatives who are here today. And when we have concluded that, uh, Coach and, and her family, as well as some players that are here, administration will be available for some one-on-one -on -one interviews, maybe some handshakes, and some, uh, some welcome to Springfields that I know you guys uh, are always kind enough to share with our, our new coaches and staff. So, with no further ado, it gives me great pleasure, pleasure to introduce the President of Missouri State University, Mr. Cliff Smart. Good, thank you, great crowd. Thanks, uh, let me just begin by thanking everyone for coming today. This is an exciting day for Missouri State University Lady Bears basketball. So, as Rick said, my job this afternoon is to discuss the process that led to the selection of Coach Mox, and then our uh, athletic director, Kyle Motes, will introduce uh, Coach Mox to you, and then she will uh, make remarks and uh, take questions. Um, you know, as soon as the University of Tennessee dismissed its uh, head women's basketball coach this spring, we knew that uh, Coach Harper might have, you know, frankly, the opportunity of a lifetime for her. And, uh, and so we began working to put things in place to be able to move very quickly if we needed to name the new women's basketball coach. This is the fourth uh, major head coaching search that uh, Kyle and I have done together. So we know how it works and uh, we know how to get it done. Um, a, part of the, uh, a part of what works for us is having a tremendous advisory committee and uh, we did that this time. The members of that committee were Carly Stubblefield, former Lady Bears player and community member, Casey Hunt, our senior uh, women's administrator, Aja Jones, who uh, runs our career center for our, uh, our student athletes, Jim Hutter, our faculty athletics representative, and Rachel Dockery, our general counsel, who literally advises me on everything and I find is a tremendous mind, no matter what the problem is. Um, so let me just begin by thanking that group of people. I think they're all here. They've all done a tremendous job, and they, they understand when they took that job, I gave them a week to get this done. And, uh, and they've come <coughs> very well, so, so thank you all. Um, Kyle and the advisory committee uh, over the last week looked at hundreds of names, made dozens of calls, to coaches, athletic directors, former players, agents, potential candidates, and others involved in women's basketball. They narrowed the pool to five. They conducted Skype interviews of those five candidates on Friday of last week. They then made dozens more calls to all the same kinds of people I referenced over the weekend. Uh, and then we conducted in-person interviews of the finalists on Monday. As we worked uh, on this, uh, there emerged a consensus among all of us involved that Coach Mox should become our next Lady Bears coach. I would tell you I was personally involved in every step of the process, um, and then Kyle talked to Coach uh, yesterday, and I then informed our Board of Governors last night of our recommendation. The board met at a specially called meeting this morning at 7.30 and unanimously approved the hire as well as the terms of the contract this morning and the press release went out at about 8.45. I want to end my part of, uh, uh, of the press conference today with a quote from Coach Kelly Harper made in her statement of thanks for six great years at Missouri State University that she published yesterday on social media and news later picked up and ran. Uh, as well. Here's the final paragraph of her, of her statement. None of this, and she's referring to her six years at Missouri State University and the success that we had during that period of time. None of this would have been possible without Kyle Motes. 
Kyle sold me on his leadership and support for the women's basketball program back in 2013. I am so thankful for the opportunity to work for <coughs> such a good person. He does things the right way, and I could always count on his guidance. Coach Fox, you can count on that as well as we go forward. Kyle, thank you for leading in this process again. Now come to the podium and introduce it. Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, before I start my remarks, um, I want to thank uh, Dan, Matt, and Dan from Color 10, Mark, and Chad, and Taylor from KY3, Andy, and Wyatt from the News Leader, and Amanda from the Standard for their coverage of our magical run in the NCAA tournament. We appreciate your effort getting to Moline, Ames, and Chicago, but most importantly, I know our team and our fans enjoyed your coverage. So thank you. I know that wasn't always so easy, but we appreciate you doing that. Thank you. I too would like to personally thank everyone involved in the process uh, for their time, effort, and diligent work. So thank you to the committee. As you would imagine, we had a lot of national interest in our head coaching position. The women's basketball community is well aware of what a great job we have at Missouri State. In discussing our strengths with people, it became clear to me how much others covet what we have. Today is a new day for Lady Bear basketball, a historic one on a number of fronts. We are hiring a seasoned veteran in our business who has earned the right to be a head coach. She has worked tirelessly to have a chance to be a head coach. She has earned the respect of her colleagues and mentors who have all praised her. And I believe she is ready to sit in the chair. Coach Mox has everything we were looking for in a coach. She's a player's coach, detail-oriented, disciplined, high integrity, community-oriented, an excellent recruiter, and is completely invested in the student athlete and wanting to make them great people first and great basketball players second. In speaking to Ariel Powers, number five pick in the WNBA draft in 2016, she said Coach Mox can always find something to make you better. She's fair and knows how to get you to do things you didn't think you could do, both on and off the court. Coach Mox was an outstanding player, was a four-time team captain in Hofstra. Her skills parlayed with her knowledge of the game and her passion for the sport make her a great coach. She has recruited at the highest level. She has recruits that have been all-conference, all-American, and have been first-round draft choices. I spoke to Tori Jankowska, number nine pick in the WNBA draft 2017, and I asked her what makes Coach Mock special. She said she's a great person who generally cares about you. The small things matter. She has a great mind on both sides of the ball, she will build the type of team that I wish I could play for. She knows what it takes to win. I also wanted someone who makes academics a priority. As a former student athlete, she understands what it takes to be successful in the classroom. I wanted someone who is compliant and has unquestionable character. Amaka fits all of those criteria. Finally, it's important to me to find someone who enjoys being in the community, someone who understands the importance of developing relationships. Again, as I spoke with people, without exception, everyone said that this is one of her greatest qualities. She is a great communicator. <laughs> she understands the uniqueness and special situation we have here. Amok expressed over and over what a great place this is and how she wanted to be a part of our university community and wants to continue our incredible legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome husband Billy, son Eze, and your new coach of the Missouri State Lady Bears, Coach Mock.
you all for that. I need to lift this up a little bit. I'm a little bit taller than Kyle here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you so much, Kyle, for that amazing, amazing introduction and for saying my son's name right. Perfect, we worked on that. <laughs> but yes, I go by Coach Mox. Um, and my full name is Amaka Abubwa Hamilton, but everybody calls me Coach Mox everywhere. That's, that's who I am. Um, and my son's name is Eze Hamilton. He might get a little fussy because he sees mommy up here. Um, but I am super, extremely excited and overjoyed to be the Missouri Lady Bears head coach. It's truly a blessing. It's a blessing to be a part of such a program with rich history, tremendous, tremendous administrative support, community support, and talented players. I want to first and foremost thank my Lord and Savior, um, because without him I would not be here. I also want to thank my amazing, um, supportive, loving family. Uh, my husband, Billy Hamilton, he is my best friend, my rock, my biggest cheerleader. Um, he's also a former college, collegiate basketball coach, so you might hear him on the sidelines. Uh, <laughs> and then my amazing, beautiful son, Eze Hamilton, who just is the apple of my eye and lights me up. You know, he's the reason why I wake up and get going every day. Um, special thanks goes to President Smart, uh, Kyle Motes, Casey Hunt, and the rest of the search committee for believing in me and my vision and providing me with this opportunity. I also would like to thank Susie Merchant and Michigan State uh, University and all the former head coaches I've worked under for investing in me, um, allowing me to contribute, allowing me to grow, and helping me become the coach I am today. Thank you to Kelly Harper and her staff uh, for continuing to raise the bar here and also for recruiting these talented individuals in front of me. Um, I wish her the best of luck in Tennessee. To our Lady Bears. I am so excited and ready for this journey ahead. I'm <laughs> we got some smiles up here that's making me laugh. Um, I look forward to building relationships with each and every one of you. I look forward to your growth. I look forward to winning on the court. I look forward to winning in the classroom and winning in the uh, community. I look forward to all of it. The journey, the ups, the downs that a season can bring, the good times, the bad. We'll embrace it all together together, which leads me into my overall coaching philosophy, as they like that one. <laughs> my overall coaching philosophy is pretty simple. It's a FAB approach, F-A-B, Family Academics Basketball. Um, family's very important to me, and it's something that we will stand for. We will know that we are accountable to the person to our left and our right, and that we are part of something that's bigger than ourselves. We, as a family, will attack this together. Our immediate family will consist of the Lady Bears program from players to coaches to managers and beyond. Um, our extended family will be our at home, real life families, the athletic um, department, the community, um, and the university as a whole. Next is academics. A always comes before B with me. Academics before basketball. Oh, our student athletes will understand that in order to take care of your business on the court, you have to take care of your business in the classroom and off the court. It all translates, it all correlates, and we will be held accountable for that. But we will celebrate your success in the classroom. I don't care if somebody gets an A or if it's a C student that gets a C, we will celebrate that and make academics fun and motivate you that way in the classroom. Next, uh, well actually, just continuing on that, you know, my job is not only to win games and make you guys the best basketball player you can be and help you that way, my job is also to uh, prepare you for life after basketball. And I take pride in that. I take pride in the mentorship with you all. I take pride in, in, in the growth that you guys are going to display on and off the court. Now basketball, that's why we're here. The tradition here is to raise banners. And that will continue to be the goal. We will not waver from that. There's many great former players um, and coaches, Coach Burnett, Jackie Styles, um, that have set that precedent. And I don't plan on wavering from that. Again, I am truly thankful, grateful, excited um, for this journey ahead. I want to thank everyone uh, for coming to this is an amazing turnout. Um, I want to thank you guys for welcoming my family into the Lady Bears family and also into Springfield uh, community. Thank you very much.
We'll take questions from the media representatives and we'll go from there. Yes. Yeah, Coach, just uh, when this job became available, how, how quickly did you jump all over? What was your thoughts when you saw it was available? Well, as soon as it became available, I mean, I knew it was a place I wanted to be. I've watched, uh, I shared with the team, I met with the team today, and that was awesome. There was a lot of energy in the room, um, a lot of big smiles. But I shared with them, I watched, I've watched them, I've watched their run, I've, I've, I've watched them since Jackie Styles' days. Um, so I always know it's one of the best mid-major programs in the country. To me, it's a premier program in a mid-major conference. It operates close to a BCS school and better than some. So it, it's a pro, and it's 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 somewhere that I've always thought I would want to be. And you know, I've turned down other opportunities because it wasn't the right fit for me. But when I met um, all these great people and administrative staff and done, did my research, I knew that this was a place that I wanted to be. So I had my um, agent contact and see if there was interest on their part, and there was. So. And what was that meeting like when you just met with them? What was kind of your message? Well, the first one was a Skype interview um, with <laughs> with um, six six people on the committee, and I thought it was very comfort uh, comfortable. It was informative, um, but I just kind of shared my vision and listened to the vision of Kyle Motes and the athletic department. But my vision of family academics basketball, um, the, the style of play I want to play, um, just just how I want to grow these student athletes on and off the court, and it seemed to just mesh well together. What about with the team just now? Well, I came in there just kind of, <laughs> yeah, let's go, you know, <laughs> super excited. Um, but then I, I expressed to them, uh, similar to what I just expressed to you guys, just my overall philosophy, but also that I know I have to come and address the media and address uh, donors and everybody, which is a big part of what I want to do, but I want them to know that they are important to me and they're the most important piece, and I want to get to know them individually, talk to their families, their parents, whoever is important to them in their life and um, start building that relationship. But I, I really do mean that when I say that, and I'm gonna invest in that. Yes? Coach, in putting together your staff, do you have anybody on the short list? And you've mentioned Jackie Styles a few times. Has that conversation happened yet? Would you welcome her to the Lady Bears? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have a short list, and I'll be meeting with some people later on this week. Um, and I have a, a strategic way of going about, you know, placing people on the staff and where, you know, just strengths and weaknesses. But as far as Jackie, I have, uh, we had a conversation and she has some opportunities, so I'm not exactly sure where that stands, but she knows that I'm interested and there's definitely a spot for her um, on my staff. Yes. How eager are you to uh, get to work with a roster, so many young players after making the run that they did, to come in as a first time head coach to uh, have a young group like this? What does that mean to you and your, for this off season? It means the world. Um, I, I think we have a very talented group coming back. I know we lost um, a very integral part of our, uh, our Sweet 16 run last year, but what we have coming back is, is really a great nucleus. Um, I know we have some freshmen coming in that are, that are highly, too, um, highly talented as well, but I, I just, I look forward to getting in the gym, um, you know, working on deficiencies and working on strengths and making them better, but I do think that the core group that we have coming back can really wreak havoc in the valley. <laughs> How much pressure do you kind of put on yourself to win now? So coming off of Sweet 16, you have this young, experienced roster now. How much pressure do you feel or do you put on yourself for that? Uh, there's definitely pressure. Making it to Sweet 16 is not easy, you know, and it's going to take a lot of hard work to repeat that. But, I mean, we will, our goal is to be competing for conference championships, get into the NCAA tournament, getting hot, see if we can uh, repeat that and, and go beyond. I mean, it's been done here many times before, so we definitely have the resources, the talent to get it done, but it's not a given, obviously, and we will be dedicated to that process. Yes? You said you've, you've um, looked past a few opportunities in the past, but why, why did you feel like right now this is the time to become head coach? Yeah, um, well, there was other personal things going on in my life. I had a baby, um, <laughs> so I didn't think that was the right time. Uh, no, uh, I, I took some personal step back to start my family, but also it has to be the right fit. I'm not the type of coach that just wants to be a head coach just to be a head coach. I want to be a head coach at a place that I feel comfortable with me and my family um, and the athletic administrative staff, the community, some, a place that is welcoming. Um, you know, it just had to be the right fit on both ends, and I really believe this is the place. 
what does it mean to you to be the first African American female head coach at this university? It's, I mean, that's that's a great question. It means it means a lot, you know, to be the first in anything is a blessing to me. Um, and I, I don't take that lightly. And I know I'll carry myself in a way that'll make the community proud um, and make it make sure I make our administration proud and our players proud. And I just I'm I'm about being a mentor. I'm about being a role model. So just stepping into that position is pretty natural for me, but I definitely don't take it for granted. You yeah, sorry, she's been oh, raising Go that. for it. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to ask you, I know you already know this, but this is a huge basketball area. Yes. And we do have success across the board in all of the different levels of uh, colleges here. And <coughs> recruiting is not easy. How will you kind of approach getting out and learning some of the uh, area kids and get to know them and let them know who you are? Yes, yeah. great question. Um, I've, I've recruited on the East Coast, I've recruited in the Midwest, I have ties all over the country. <laughs> I have ties all over the country, so I'll tap into the resources that I have, but also, um, you know, I've never recruited in this state, um, well, a little bit in St. Louis, but I know we gotta keep the home kids home, and I know we gotta touch some of the surrounding states, so putting together my staff, uh, that's what I was talking about being strategic in what I do. Um, two of them are from this state, and have connections here where that could be an easy, um, transition and you know, getting in with some of the AAU programs and high school programs. So, you know, you can't come to a new place and have uh, staff members from all over the country. You know, you have to kind of localize that a little bit. So I think they will help with that transition. And then I just got to get out there and grind and meet people and shake hands and, you know, build relationships. Thank you. Yes. Coach, can you talk about your coaching philosophy, what we can expect on the floor? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I'm a up-tempo um, type of coach. So offensively, I was sharing with the girls today and they seem pretty excited about it. Um, but I do want to get up and down transition, um, discipline transition, where we know the options and what we're looking for. Um, and then we'll also have like a motion offense that allows us to kind of read and react a little bit and play off each other. But we'll also have some quick hits where we, where we will take advantage of, you know, a bigger guard or post player that can step out. <coughs> um, defensively, um, I'm primarily a man-to-man -man coach, but I also like zone. So we'll have a mixture of both and just be disruptive on the defensive end. Um, again, going back to my coaching staff, I have a guy that, that I'm really interested in that is a defensive-minded guy, and, and we've already talked about things we want to do. So, um, you know, just being really disruptive, trying to create turnovers, deflections, and then we can get some easy baskets in transition. Yes, sorry. You cannot say today, but in your career, whether it's coaching or playing, what stands out as maybe your favorite moment or top two moments from your career? Well, um, playing, I would probably say when we played, I played UConn as a player. I thought that was that was pretty cool and I had a pretty good game. So, uh, we did win. Uh, that's not fun, you know. Um, so, that would probably be that moment, but coaching, I would say last season when we upset um, Oregon at home, they were number three at the time, and um, it was my scout, and <laughs> I just had to put that in there. But, uh, no, we, we upset Oregon, and it was just an amazing feeling for our team. Our senior had the best game of her career. It was all over ESPN. Um, I thought that was one of my favorite moments as a coach, just to see a kid who just worked really hard to get where she was, um, have that success, have that moment. She was reduced to tears after the game. Um, so that was probably one of my big moments. Coach, what about scheduling? What's your philosophy on that as far as getting ready for conference and then postseason? Yeah, um, in, in non-conference, I, I do want to play some teams. I know we will always play Mizzou, but I want to play some, you know, bigger teams, I guess, uh, BCS teams, just to get us prepared for the NCAA tournament. I think it's important, you know, if you play some of the lower level teams and you go undefeated, that's great, but are you ready for a postseason play? So um, I definitely want to do that. Um, there'll be a mixture. We're not going to play all, you know, uh, BCS teams, but we want to sprinkle in some of that and um, just make sure we're ready for the postseason. Yes, sorry. Have you been in touch with uh, any of the incoming freshmen recruits? Not yet. Um, just, just literally today was kind of my first day. Um, but not yet, but I plan on doing that. I want to talk to them. I want to talk to their parents. Uh, again, with our current student athletes, I'm going to do the same, you know, individually, 
spend some time with them and their parents and just get to know everybody and kind of make sure everybody's comfortable with me too because I don't want anybody going anywhere. Um, so uh, it's definitely a priority to me. Congratulations. All right. Thank you very much.